Hello, I am Dr. Vinod. I am mechanical engineer and I have served engineering industry for 17 years. Currently, I am country head for Institute of Analytics, which is a global body headquartered at London. The point comes, why you will learn data analysis? And there can be varied reasons which can be cited. I have put few things. One, it will give you informed decision making ability. Your decisions will be based on facts, data based and real things. It is going to be a scientific decision making. So less of guesswork, less of gut feeling. Of course, you will apply your gut feeling and your guesswork, but it has to be blended with some facts, some real data some real information. Hence, you can say that your decision making is scientific. You can demonstrate your logic behind decision making to the stakeholders. Stakeholder may be your boss, your higher ups, your colleagues, your subordinates and even client. You will be ultra confident when you are taking a decision based on facts and this will give you an edge this will act by virtue of that you will command additional respect from your uh, uh, your stakeholders you will have the ability to go into details when you are analyzing anything or taking decision making based on facts or based on data obviously automatically evidently you are going more into the details of the information and and net net it will give a better performance for the organization and for your department. What is data analysis? It is nothing but only going into deeper insights of the information, analyzing and when we say analyzing, typically it means understanding association between phenomena, characters which you have captured while collecting the information which will definitely be available within your department through different different routes or from different different channels. You will try to understand the hidden patterns, you will try to understand the relationship between phenomena and after careful analysis then you will make decisions. Typical data analysis cycle goes like this. The first aspect is data collection. Data collection is obvious. I am sure that day in day out your table is full of information. Your laptop, your mails are receiving flow of information in a continuous manner. You need to analyze that and post analysis you need to find impact, patterns, associations, relationships and then take a wise decision, conclude it and then share with stakeholders which can be your boss, your internal team or can be an external team. We have taken a small sample of 30 respondents and uh, these are having six variables. Among these six variables, one is blood pressure, another is cholesterol, third is age and then pregnancy and then anxiety level and then drug reaction. This is a clinical research or clinical test. A particular drug was administered and it was observed whether drug had done any reaction or not. Last variable which is drug R is having zeros and ones. Zero stands for no drug reaction and one stands for drug reaction. Anxiety level low and high. If the respondent is having low anxiety level it is mentioned as zero and if the respondent is having high anxiety level then it is documented as 1. If the respondent is pregnant it is quantified as 1 and if not pregnant it is quantified as 0. The remaining 3 are continuous variables. Continuous variables are like height, weight, temperature, gold price, sensex, income likewise. When we say continuous it does mean 
that between one number and another for example between 7 and 10 obviously there can be 8 and 9 between and 7 and 10 but if this data series is to be termed as continuous it means that there will be infinite numbers between 7 and 10 for example 7.1 7.11 7.2 7.3 and likewise you can imagine that there can be a continuous series and that's why we call it as a continuous variable same applies to cholesterol same applies to blood pressure small data set 30 observations 30 respondents six variables you as a manager need to first understand this data and by and large you will have information or data in two types and we say that there will be two types of variables one continuous and the other one is categorical here categorical variables are pregnant anxiety and drug reaction continuous variables are blood pressure cholesterol and age let's go to examine categorical variables first there are three for for demonstration we are picking anxiety level we can plot a beautiful bar diagram as shown there where the first bar which is in green color which is having more height is having 16 observations and the right side plot or right side bar plot is having 14 observations meaning thereby in the data there are 16 candidates or 16 respondents who were having low anxiety level and there were 14 who were having high anxiety level you can very easily imagine that if your data is little bit larger you cannot observe these type of things from your naked eyes or by looking at, at the data you need some graphical presentations like bar plot there is another method which is called pie chart before going for bar plot we can have the information in tabular form you can see in the left hand side numbers are mentioned 16 is below 0 and 14 is below 1 likewise you can analyze your categorical data now for continuous data we have taken the example of age at the bottom some descriptive statistics is shown which is so vital and so important which you should not ignore at any point of time whenever you get continuous data it's always a good practice to have descriptive statistics and here in this table or here in this output we have put a red rectangle across the information of age and we will go one by one the first information says which is having a heading vars v a r s this is nothing but about variables and you can see that age is the variable number three there are one two three and which is not shown there is four five and six and variable number third is having three zero thirty observations which is having a heading small n small n stands for numbers so meaning thereby this is a third variable in your data and having 30 observations 37.77 and the column heading is mean mean is nothing but only average and surely mean is the most important statistics about any data you would like to know that where your entire data is centered and typically in technical terms we say like that what is the central tendency of the data so mean is very important and we have observed from our data that the mean is 37.77 next comes standard deviation which is 18.8 median is 31 trimmed mean is 35.62 mad don't consider that mad means a man 
who is not having brain. Here, mad means median, average or absolute deviation. Correctly, it is median, absolute deviation. Then you have a number for minimum. Then you have a column for maximum. You have range and you have skewness and you have kurtosis and at the end it is standard error of mean. In this slide you will see that there is a very beautiful diagram which is colored green and blue. This is called histogram. What is a histogram? It's a very simple graphical presentation but very very useful. Again it is advised that whenever you are having continuous data immediately have the descriptive statistics and soon after that plot the histogram. If you look at this histogram you can very easily understand that your data is more on left hand side and that's why we have colored it with green. More concentration is happening towards left hand side and the blue bars are towards higher side. Data is arranged from low to high and some class intervals, logical class intervals are assumed. For example, it can be of 10-10 intervals, it can be of 20-20 intervals, it can be of 30-30 intervals, it's your choice. And if you will not prescribe it or if you will not define it while making the histogram, your software, typically Excel, is smart enough to understand that what should be the logically correct class interval and it will throw a beautiful histogram in front of you. The verticals or the y-axis of a histogram is count, means frequency. For example, age between a particular number, say for example, between 20 and 30, how many numbers are there in the data? We can see that here it is 7. So you can have a very good understanding by looking at histogram that in your data age between 20 and 30 there are 7 respondents and likewise you can decode the entire histogram and have a good understanding about the phenomena or the characteristic or the variable of age. In the center you are observing a red line and it represents mean. So in histogram you can observe that mean which is 37.77 is denoted by a red line. We can plot a bell shaped curve in your histogram and this bell shaped curve which is shown here with blue line indicates that how close your data is with a perfect bell shaped curve. A bell shaped curve is called normal distribution curve also. It's always good that you plot a box plot also soon after making a histogram. The purpose of box plot is to identify few observations which are not like the general observations or not like the many observations or maximum observations in the data. Say for example, you are having four observations of weight. Now we are taking the example of weight. The first weight is 37 kg, another is 42 kg, third one is say 47 kg and the fourth one is 98 kg. You can very easily understand that this 98 kg weight is not like these three weights and we call it outlier. Outlier are of paramount importance for a manager because outlier indicates something uncommon, something unusual and a manager has to notice that, a manager has to acknowledge that and in a data imagine that there are 10,000, 1,000, 500 observations, you obviously cannot go to each cell of your excel sheet and try to figure out that which particular observation is 
out there and that's why you need a more smarter technique or a graphical presentation which is nothing but only box plot again the left hinge of the box plot represent minimum the rightmost hinge represent maximum and the middle red box which you are observing is typically middle 50 percent of the observations again a very vital information for you where your middle 50 percent of the data lies important for you left hand side to this red box is first 25 percent observations right side to this box red box is last upper higher 25 percent observations it's always good to examine histogram and box plot and these two diagrams along with the sample statistics which is shown on slide number seven these three things will equip you with entire information which you should know for a continuous variable let's go deeper and use excel and find descriptive statistics which we had shown in a horizontal manner here only for age the entire descriptive statistics is shown the first which is at third number row is mean which is 37.77 which is indicating that around 37.77 and 37.77 if we talk in terms of age and when we say in terms of decimal it makes less sense so let's round it up 38 so 38 years is the mean age or is the age around which your entire data is distributed key information important information next we will go to median you can see 38 was the average and median is 31 uh -huh. and the difference is noticeable 38 and 31 a gap of six years why like this and the reason is look at the histogram the histogram is more skewed more concentrated on left hand side data is not uniformly distributed it is not symmetrical it is more on left hand side and whenever data is like this where the concentration is heterogeneous or it is more focused either on left side or on right hand side then the central tendency if you try to measure or quantify in terms of mean it's not a good idea then you need to go for positional center which is median how do we calculate median median is a very simple interpretation again data is arranged from low to high and we find out which number is coming at exactly 50 percent of the position which is 31 the next is mode and the number shown there is 18 what does it mean recall that you have 30 respondents and meaning thereby you have 30 observations of age among them 18 years of age is the number which had occurred maximum mean median and mode in case if they are same it means that your data is perfectly distributed as per a bell shape next we need to go for understanding standard deviation which is 18.79 or we can round it up to 18.8 .8. what does it mean standard deviation is a very important statistics it indicates you about the spread of the data mean and median they indicate you about the central tendency of the data whereas standard deviation will tell you about the spread higher the standard deviation higher is the spread lower is the standard deviation lower is the spread higher variation 
higher standard deviation is not good whether it is a process whether it is a manufacturing process whether it is a food or beverages process whether it is a process of uh, measuring uh, performance of employees whatever is the process higher variation is not a good sign not a good thing there has to be consistency there has to be a narrow band within which a process should work as a manager standard deviation should be your key parameter whenever you analyze your sales employees behavior income of the employees revenues losses gains whatever phenomena you observe which should be if it is continuous you should know the standard deviation about that and you can use standard deviation for comparing two datas which are taken at different point of time say for example you are measuring sales of north india north india can be ncr new delhi you can include rajasthan you can include some part of madhya pradesh up and say south india say karnataka tamil nadu uh, hyderabad telangana uh, you can consider odisha also up to some extent the point is bifurcate your geographical data in two categories and then find out the behavior of sales in one geographical region and in another geographical region and don't miss to calculate standard deviation lesser standard deviation will indicate you a more consistent efforts a more consistency meaning thereby the team working there is more consistent whereas higher standard deviation will indicate that executives or managers are showing inconsistent behavior sometimes very high sales and sometimes very low sales which need to be addressed so mean and standard deviation these are the two very very important sample statistics which you should refer along with histogram and box plot there are two terms which are mentioned here kurtosis and skewness these two terms are by and large used by hardcore stock statisticians here we will try to understand the managerial implication of these two funny looking terms kurtosis is about the peakedness of the data so for the time being we are not giving much stress about kurtosis however skewness is important to you as a manager skewness means concentration of the data you can again look at histogram and we have observed that data is more on left hand side or more on low side and the skewness value is 0.844 this skewness value 0.844 which is a positive sign as a matter of fact we can read it as plus 0.844 what does it mean if skewness value is having a positive sign it indicates that your data is more on left hand side interpretation of skewness is slightly tricky and the trickiness is very simple it is having inverse understanding meaning thereby if skewness is positive data is more on left hand side low side common sensically or intuitively we understand any positive number towards higher side or any negative number towards lower side in case of skewness the interpretation is slightly reversed positive skewness means more concentration on left side negative skewness means means more concentration on right hand side skewness is again a parameter which you can understand or which you should refer along with histogram next again three important things range minimum and maximum as a manager or as an executive you would like to know that in a particular phenomena what is the minimum value what is the maximum value again imagine you have 20000 data points 
you cannot go to each and every cell for figuring out that where minimum lies or where is the maximum value. You need some smarter technique and the smarter technique is in front of you. Just play around with Excel. In fraction of seconds, this descriptive statistics will be given to you and you can have a look. Minimum is 16 years age and maximum is, oh my God, it is 81. Huge variation. 16 year age is very young, 16 years old and maximum, oh my God, very ripe age, 81. This is a very important indication or very important information for you that your data is having this much variation. The next very important information given by this simple analysis is a confidence level which is 7.018531 and this confidence level is reported at 95% level. For the time being, we are not going to discuss that what this 95% confidence level is. We are focusing on the number which is 7.01 or 7.02. Let's understand that how we can make a good use of this information. This 7.01 or 7.02 if added to the sample mean which is 37.77 then you will get 44.78 and if you round it up it will become 45 and this we call as upper bound. Now the same number 7.02 if subtracted from sample mean which is 37.77, then you will get 30.75. If you round it up, you can say that it is 31. Now you have two numbers, 31 and 45. How you will interpret this? Based on your sample, you can estimate, you can predict, you can forecast, you can say that in population, the average age is between 31 and 45 and how we express it we say like that as per the evidence thrown by the sample mind it you are a manager you have to be data driven so you need to say like that as per the evidence thrown by the sample you are 95 percent confident that the mean age of population will lie between 31 and 45. What we have learned just now is called inferential statistics where you infer some phenomena. Here it was mean. The phenomena mean is inferred about population based on sample statistics. So that is a very wonderful utility or utilization of your sample statistics. Next comes a relationship between two variables. And when I say relationship, it means that we are talking about continuous variable. Consider our same data of 30 respondents where a particular drug is administered and we are keen to know whether a particular drug had reacted or not. Recall that there were three continuous variables. One is blood pressure, then cholesterol and then age. The top in this slide, a correlation matrix has been shown and you can observe that all diagonal values are having 1, 1, 1, meaning thereby blood pressure versus blood pressure. The correlation coefficient has to be 1. Similarly, cholesterol versus cholesterol, the coefficient of correlation will be 1. Age versus age, the coefficient will be 1. Now, blood pressure versus cholesterol, you can see the number is 0 0.07. Coefficient of correlation will vary from minus 1 to plus 1. That we will see later in the coming slides. Here it is shown that blood pressure and cholesterol 
is having a correlation of 0 0.07. Blood pressure and age is having a reasonably good correlation of 0.54. The moment you see this matrix, correlation matrix is the technical name of this, then you can very easily have a good understanding in your mind that how your continuous variables are interconnected with each other. What use you will make out of this wonderful information? The answer is based on the wisdom which you will get from correlation matrix later on you can build some predictive models like linear regression which we are going to see in quite some time. This is correlation matrix and you can see that some numbers are crossed whereas a number 0 0.54 is written in a big red big blue circle. What does it mean? It shows that 0 0.07 and 0 0.14 however mathematically the correlation was found as 0 0.07 and 0 0.14. We usually say that statistics and mathematics is innocent. If you apply any mathematical treatment to any data set, some number will definitely come out. Now as a manager, you need to think whether that number is making some usable sense or not. 0 0.07 is a very weak correlation and you can say that almost there is no relationship between blood pressure and cholesterol. Again, the point to be noted that based on your data, medical science may say that cholesterol and blood pressure are thickly and thinly correlated. They are having very strong relationship. But our debate is not at this moment of time. Our debate is the evidence or the information displayed by our data. Our data says that blood pressure and cholesterol are having weak relationship. Similarly, blood pressure, cholesterol and age 0.14 is having a weak relationship and that's why in the correlation matrix these two numbers are crossed and this way you are getting a very ready-made information that blood pressure and cholesterol are not nicely correlated. Similarly, cholesterol and age are not nicely correlated. However, blood pressure and age are reasonably correlated. Again, there is a data where there are 234 data points of different different automobiles. And these automobiles are typically two-seater, compact, mid-size, minivan, pickup, subcompact, and SUV. And you can see on the y-axis, there is a variable HWY. This is mileage on highway. We can see that the mileage in city will be different of a car and the mileage on highway where very less road breakers are there, very less signals are there, very less traffic is there and a car can move more smoothly. There we can expect a good mileage vis-a-vis -vis, or as compared to if a car moves in a city with full of traffic. X-axis is the displacement of engine. In an engine there is a piston which moves to and fro, combustion happens which generates thermal energy and it gives energy to wheels and wheels rotate and that way a car moves. We can very easily imagine and understand that this displacement if low will result in a different manner and if this displacement is larger will result the entire efficiency of the automobile in a different manner. The point is that this displacement is a critical element in an engine. Here a diagram is shown where you can understand the relationship between mileage on highway and displacement of the engine. 
one important thing you can see that all bars all lines are starting from top from left top corner and as the line grows it is going down the more it moves towards right bottom corner the trend is going downwards it implies that as the displacement become larger the mileage becomes lower and we saw this as the displacement become smaller the mileage becomes larger different different colors are allotted to different different category of the vehicle say for example two seater which you can see towards the right hand side of the plot it says curve like this and it says that displacement around 6 to 7 is associated with mileage between you can say 24 and 28 somewhere like that and that way you can establish or generate a understanding between displacement and highway let us go slightly more deeper this purple color is quite interesting because it is going very steep down then get stabilized and then again going down quite an interesting plot what does it mean let's find out that this purple color belongs to which category of automobile uh -huh. and it is subcompact so subcompact category is having a typical behavior with regard to highway mileage and displacement however one thing is sure and certain that the relationship between highway mileage and displacement is inversely proportional when we say it is inversely proportional it means if you increase one phenomena correspondingly there will be a decrease in another phenomena and vice versa if you decrease one phenomena then there will be an increase in another phenomena very interesting information you can gather in one shot through a scatter plot and can build a understanding about different different categories of automobile left bottom is shown that in the data of 234 cars or automobiles two seaters were five compact were 47 mid size were 41 minivan were 11 pickup were 33 subcompact were 35 and suv were 62. this is a very wonderful pictorial presentation of the data which is called heat map you can see on the x-axis all the six variables are shown starting from pregnant anxiety drug reaction age blood pressure and cholesterol if you look at the x-axis there is one another interesting observation that from zero which you can understand as left bottom point as zero and as you progress towards right the variables are automatically arranged according to the magnitude of their data we have discussed and we have understood that pregnant anxiety and drug reaction are quantified as zero and one whereas age and blood pressure and cholesterol are quantified as a continuous variable and cholesterol is reported at the end meaning thereby the numbers within cholesterol are the largest numbers among age blood pressure and cholesterol among these three variables the first one is age you can very easily understand that age cannot be in three digits if you say that yes it is possible that in the real world you have people who are having age of 110 or 112 or 103 but it's not usual age generally will be within two, di two digits 81 and 16 don't forget these are the two numbers which you have already discovered that in your data 81 is the highest number of age and 16 is the lowest number blood pressure i would like to take you to the data which is given in slide number i would like to show once again here you see 
slide number six, blood pressure is 100, 120, and 110, 100. And the next is cholesterol 150 and 160, 150, which is having maximum number in terms of its absolute quantum, whereas age is 16, 18, 25, and 36. See, in this heat map, all the variables are arranged according to their quantum. Now, you are seeing some tree type of picture with y-axis and some again a small tree type of picture at the top of x-axis or at the top of the diagram. What does it show? Whatever the data is given to you, it's very interesting if you go with heat map. It will give you some interesting insights which otherwise you cannot find. Now let's understand the top three. As a matter of fact, it is showing two very important information. Information number one, you see the red, the upper tree left half, red lines. It shows that pregnancy, anxiety and drug reaction. They are one which is shown by a horizontal red line. They are one type of variables and we can very easily understand how they are one type of variables because they are coded as 0, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1 and then age can also be clipped with this group. What a wonderful information. Pregnancy is closely related to age as compared to blood pressure and cholesterol. Anxiety is closely related to age as compared to blood pressure and cholesterol. Drug reaction is again associated with age more strongly as compared to blood pressure and cholesterol. Let's go deeper one by one. Pregnancy. We can very easily understand younger the age, higher is the chance of becoming pregnant. Higher is the age, lesser are the chances. Whereas blood pressure is having not very much significant or quantifiable impact on pregnancy. Same applies to cholesterol. Cholesterol has to do nothing with pregnancy. However, pregnancy is having a strong association with regard to age. Let's come to anxiety. You look at a boy who is going to class one or kindergarten. What anxiety he is having? Almost zero. Though little anxiety that boy or a girl is suffering because of his mom and dad's discipline and disciplined at the school, but the child is innocent. He is not taking things on his heart. If you ask him, are you anxious? He will immediately say, no, I am not anxious. Among all these six variables, apart from pregnancy, anxiety, drug reaction and age, Blood pressure and cholesterol can be considered in one category of variables. Such a wonderful information which you will get in one click. Now let's see the y-axis tree diagram. I am deliberately not using the name of this tree diagram. And now I am going to use the name of this diagram is dendrogram. So now let's see left side dendrogram and you can see that there are one, two, three, four. There are four colors. So automatically your software has given you four colored dendrogram and what it says? It says if you look at the left top pink color diagram, you can go towards the right. There are some numbers. What are these numbers? These numbers are row numbers and it says that in this pink color diagram row number 25, 30, 28, 26, 7 and so on. You can club these respondents as one group based on pregnancy, anxiety, drug reaction, age, blood pressure and cholesterol. Let's go to the bottom one of the y-axis. There is a small dendrogram where there are only three observations. Look at the right side. 
5, 17 and 18. So case number or the subject number or the respondent or the patient patient number 5, 17 and 19 are displaying similar characteristics, similar behavior on the basis of pregnant, anxiety, drug reaction, age, blood pressure and cholesterol. Wonderful observation. At the same way you can decode and interpret. It's up to you how you will use this information. But a good idea to later on apply either segmentation or clustering of your respondents for some other purpose. There is one very important feature of this interactive heat map. This is not a static heat map. This is an interactive heat map. If this is a picture, so this will not happen here. But when you build it and you move your mouse in this heat map, then whenever you will stop at any particular cell, it will display that it is which row number and what is the value there. For example, I had kept my cursor somewhere here and it is row number 24, column pregnant and the value was 1, meaning thereby candidate 24 or the respondent 24 is pregnant. And likewise, you can move your cursor and enjoy the entire data in one shot. Very wonderful thing. Now let's see how analytics is around us and we will pick few examples though a day has come where because of several reasons one very dominant reason is now around us everything is digitized, everything is coded, everything is documented, everything is stored and this paves way to analyze those accumulated data or the information. Application of analytics is having a very wide spectrum and uh, it's appropriate to mention whether it is sea, whether it is behind or below earth geography, whether it is forest, whether it is sky or astronomy, whether it is election, whether it is a movie, whether it will be hit or not hit, everywhere application of analytics is feasible and is being used. Good to see few examples which are around us. One example is like this. If a consumer has purchased bread, butter, jam, cheese and eggs, what more can be suggested him to buy? A very wonderful application. We can understand all malls, all stores are facing very stiff competition. The margin is thin, competition is very high, every store is competing with each other and the, look at the pictures. Have you ever observed that how things are arranged in the store? They are arranged in a very scientific manner. There is a you can call it data mining or machine learning or a statistical method which had been applied before deciding that how to keep goods, what should be the order, which, should, which things should be kept near because they have learned this from their past data. You might have observed that the things which are connected to each other, for example bread, butter, jam, cheese and eggs are are at one place. It is not uh, like this that egg you will find at one corner of the shop and cheese you will find at another corner or a jam you will find at another corner. All these are together and it happens through analytics. I have just given the name of city as Bangalore because I am in Bangalore and the question is college girls do more shopping on weekends or boys too? It looks very simple information, but it is having huge managerial implication. If it comes to designing advertisement, if it comes to declare discounts or offers, then gender matters whether the businessman or the business is trying to capture girls more or trying to capture boys more. They need to know this beforehand. 
and with the help of that information they will design their other strategies like advertisement how we will find that that we will find through exploratory data analysis few steps or few things related to exploratory data analysis we have discussed in the beginning you can extend the same particularly the last diagram which we have seen heat map through there you can have some clue and move on can we profile the customers at a beauty product shop at a beauty product shop generally nowadays men are also going to beauty product shop a recent trend but by and large girls go or ladies go can we profile the group of ladies based on gender age their profession of course their weight height color and education level we can very easily understand that each element or each phenomena is very closely connected to the to the product which they buy a fatty lady may not buy those goods which increase her weight if her height is small she will buy few things which will help her to look taller color color of a lady again it is having an impact on the things which she will buy obviously she will buy those things which will give her a feeling that she is looking more fairer education level yes it plays its role more person more education a person is having we can very easily imagine or assume that the person will go for bio products not for artificial products with this understanding can we group the consumers can we group the customers and a small diagram is shown with red purple black yellow blue green color where the entire mass or the entire population or the entire data is segregated is segmented is clustered and once this is done clustering is done you can apply profiling of individual cluster we are having one example which we are going to see in the coming time A cat killed. Average is dead.